Hey, welcome back to the Feminine Space Podcast. I'm Natasha Ku, and on this very special episode, we have Lexi Maleski with us. And I'm really, really honored to introduce you to all of you, and I can't wait to share her story, of course. But Lexi, for those of you who don't know her, she seeks to reach a greater community through her chiropractic and doula practice. She works with working and single income families in the entire Dallas Fort um, Worth Metroplex. And the majority of the people she serves have never seen a chiropractor before. So Dr. Alexi realized the need for this affordable service in holistic health care and has created the nonprofit our birthing home wellness community recently in 2017. So welcome onto the show, Lexi, and it's so wonderful to have you on here with us. Thank you, Natasha. I I really appreciate being here. Wow. So just reading your bio, it just makes me feel like there's there's a greater purpose. It, It links to some greater desire of you to serve the community, to be more than, you know, a practicing doctor or someone in the medicinal field. So tell me a bit about how you found found your way to kind of niche down or focus on the people who you serve today, or how, how, how did your path end up this way? That is a fantastic story. Um, I actually wanted to be an OBGYN or an obstetrician and be delivering babies in hospitals um, since I was 10 years old. And life path changed over time. Um, I started working for a chiropractor in high school and that started to change the mindset a little bit, but ego was really strong and in the way. Um, Received a full ride or full scholarship to undergrad. And last semester, um, I took a class in childbirth history. And that's when I realized I don't want to be a trained surgeon. I don't want to cut women open when they can deliver these babies, when they can you know, truly deliver them on their own. Um, so that led me on the path post back with um, nursing prereqs to become a midwife. Halfway through that fall semester, I was just like, mm, no, I went to school to be a doctor. Ego, ego. Uh, I went to school to be a doctor and I want to do that. So um, instead of applying to medical school, I ended up applying to chiropractic school secondarily and was called down to Dallas and moved here within four days from Wisconsin, put everything I could in my car and just started school. And halfway through the chiropractic program, I learned about becoming a certified doula. And that's when I realized, oh, this is the combination that I can create um, and enter the birth world um, through chiropractic and doula care. And then um, just serving that working in single income family. That's what I grew up with. My both my parents have worked. um, And just realizing that they're the people that need it most that need the help as far as Um, quality of life improved because they're the ones with the least amount of resources. So providing that care as a resource to allow them to live a better life, I mean, that just allows them either to work better, longer, um, and to enjoy their life as well. Yeah. Not just the communities that you, you chose to serve, but also the the line of work that you do, I always find that I, I don't know what the te- technical or the, the proper term is for um, you know the feel of like the giving birth and being a doula and dealing with the newborns and infants. That's a very very special special place to be in or a special moment mm-hmm. to share with someone else or to give that care. How how come you? I don't know within your story what was that spark or when did you realize that this, this is special to you too? Are you a mother yourself or where does that connection come from? No, I have no kids yet. Um, still need a boyfriend. So still <laughs> working on that. <laughs> but um, as far as birth itself, it is so sacred and it has caught my attention since a very young age. I'm the oldest of four. Um, my mom had natural birth all in the hospital, um, with us. She was the 11th of 12 and her mother delivered 10, the first 10 at home. And my mom was actually the first birth in a hospital and my Olita hated it. She did not like it. Um, and I find it very fascinating because my mom is from Mexico and a lot of the sacredness that 
comes with indigenous and culturally um, just the healing aspect of pregnancy and postpartum is lost in America. And I don't know if that was glowing to me. It's like deep down inside the, you know, the Mexican roots were coming out or if it was just the true curiosity. I'm, very, I'm a very curious human being. So I don't know if it was the curiosity of childbirth and not really knowing much about it. Um, but I covered it up for a while and said I wanted to be a heart surgeon, which is really interesting. Um, I actually would not want to do that at all. But <laughs> that um, spark, it just... It just hit me when I was playing Barbies. My Barbies were always pregnant. It was I always wanted to like see the shows with pregnancy or um, TLC. What was it? Birth Story was my favorite show growing up. But you know, it was just something about it that really grabbed my attention. And I don't know, like I said, I don't know if it was that deep, like inside the Mexican roots and the sacredness of birth and trying to bring back that sacredness. If it was already ignited back then when I was ten years old, or or what? But that's that's been what I've been moving towards more of that sacredness and the intimacy within birth and protecting that. Mm. Yeah, that's really funny how sometimes, you know, just when you share your story at a very young age as a child without even much comprehension of what that whole process is, you're already, you're, you have those dolls, right? And then when you get older and then the mind just kind of you listen to what the head is saying right, and the ideas of what should be right. And you just kind of go back and forth and, and then you sometimes just come full circle back to um, what you kind of always knew. That's, 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 mm-hmm. that's the path that many, many of us take, isn't it? But the beautiful thing yeah. is that here you are, you know, you follow your intuition, you follow that pull. It feels like towards your roots, towards, something very deep, very sacred, and something that was close to your heart from the beginning. So that's, mm. that's really beautiful to see. How did you navigate, though? Because I understand the ego and how, you know, if, if we make big decisions in our life, like we, we choose our studies or we choose our career path, it, we feel like we have to kind of finish that. It's like a book, you know, it, to give a, like a really minimal example, a book. There are some people mm-hmm. who start it, they're in the third chapter and they say, oh my goodness, I know I'm going to be wasting my time because I know this book sucks, but I feel like I have to read through it. And sometimes we make a certain decision in our life and we feel like, okay, I better stick to it. Even if that's five years, 10 years down the road, I should stick with that. So was it difficult to begin to listen to your heart, even though it seems like there were strong, you know, thinking or ideals of how things should be? Oh man, that is such a good question. Um, so a lot of masks have been ripped off. A lot of layers have been ripped off society. You know, you want to be of it in it and the peer pressure. Um, I wanted to be the cool girl. I wanted to be, I wanted to fit in, you know, I never thought I was cool enough. I never thought I was pretty enough, all of that. And, and I think all of that built up, Um, and through undergrad, I was that lost girl, you know, I was partying every weekend, um, started drinking when I was 15, blackout every weekend, still performed excellently in school and, you know, sports, dancing, all of that. But, um, moving forward in undergrad, I think the beauty of chiropractic is that it allows you to integrate your life experiences and having had chiropractic care from age 16 when I started working with the chiropractors that I had been working for even though I didn't understand it fully I think that allowed my body and my mind and my soul to integrate so much more and at a deeper and faster level but also when I do something that I want I'm pretty impulsive and so I I always finish what I need to finish but I call it Lexi time it may take a little longer than others expect it to but um, when I want something I go for it and so when my mind changes the adaptability that I have kicks in so hard that okay you know that's it we're gonna go ahead and go down this this path instead of that path it didn't work no big deal and birth being in a like as a birth worker has really helped me to become more adaptable as well because if I'm serving people as a chiropractor and all of a sudden I get my one of my clients is calling me because they're in labor and they need support I gotta go so you know that has really helped um create more of a change if 
if I need to change my path now today, but back in undergrad, I mean, it hit me so hard in that one class that I think, I honestly think it was the chiropractic care. Um, I had a really big bout of IBS or irritable bowel syndrome in undergrad. I was very stressed out um, and probably in and out of the bathroom every 20 minutes uh, God, for almost two years. And I think that was also a huge um, life path change and shift because then I started looking at diet. I started looking at all these different things that, you know, do affect your experience of life. So there was a lot of change that semester, I feel like. So um, I think just listening and I feel like I've always been pretty close, pretty intuitive in general. Um, I always say I've lived 27 lives. I feel like I probably should not be here um, just with the the situations that I've gotten myself into and the experiences that I've had even abroad. Um, but I feel that I've always been guided. I feel that I've always been protected. And I feel that I've always been, um, as long as I am true to serving the community and what's best for the community, I've always felt that I've been guided in the right way. Um, and just listening to that. And again, it's taking the, the proper measures. We all have responsibility of our life. And I think that's what I ended up doing that semester was finally taking responsibility um, and realizing that I can change my life and I don't have to be in the bathroom every 20 minutes. Or, you know, I don't have to, you know, go down this path of a profession that could potentially be even more detrimental to our birth culture. So. Mm. Wow. Sometimes all it takes is that one experience or that one realization and then it's like a little domino effect i just see it it just yeah. knocks down all the plans we've ever made you're like no scrap that and then mm-hmm. <laughs> and then we'll, we'll we'll go a completely different way so thank you for sharing that story and also the courage it must have taken to to just close that door right it's closing one door and then opening another and then as you say you're so headstrong you're so determined and that's just it you knew you have to walk through it and and then the actions followed so Mm -hmm. what that's really really courageous so you're here really serving quite a important need in my opinion because i how the feminine space even came about was i was reading um wild feminine by Tammy Lynn Kent, and she's this pelvic care practitioner. And, you know, through that, I, I, I uh, read more on birth. Um, and I realized that a lot of spiritual teachers were practices. If you talk about like, oh, enlightenment or spiritual, whatever, and like at the, at the highest degree, let's say, you know, then you, you kind of imagine someone in the mountains just like so enlightened. They don't need to, like, it, this is kind of exaggerated, but like so enlightened to the point where they're, they're glowing. They don't have to eat. They're up in the mountains. They're, 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 they're floating. And then, you know, they're healing everything. It's kind of like this level of, wow, it's like supernatural. It's human. They're, they're, they're with source and all that. But I find that sometimes in the spiritual field or the self-development field, we forget the body. We forget that this physical thing here is a direct channel through what we call the divine or the oneness or the love and what we're really looking for. And I just love how in your story, you talked about that chiropractic um, course or practice giving you like opening that door back into your body and realizing, wait, there, there's something within me, this body, and there's a source of wisdom that can come from women and it comes from this body. So it's very deep and profound and wise and like connected to the divine feminine, what you're doing, but it comes from the body. And I wanted to kind of mention that and kind of play, play, play around that subject with you. Cause I find really sometimes it's people just neglect the body or certain silent retreats. You can't do yoga or sit in this posture for hours, you know? Mm-hmm. Exactly. It's, it's something that I go back and forth with all the time, because ultimately, I want to be in union with God, with divine, um, in flow with the universe, all of those wonderful things. But our body is the temple within which we are able to do so. 
And if we are not taking care of what we were given, if we are not responsible for what we are given, how is the universe going to, you know, allow us to receive then? Or how are we going to be able to receive if we're not even able to give of ourselves or to, to really take care of ourselves? And our body is just so, it is capable of so much. And especially in childbirth, we see it, right? We see the miraculousness of the body and what it is capable of doing and what it's capable of going through for 30 hours or, you know, however long the birth experience is for that specific woman. But we have to prepare our bodies and we have to take care of them because it leads to a better quality of life. If you are not worried about your sprained ankle, you're better able to eat the things that you need to, to become clearer in your body and to become clearer in mind. And I think what's so beautiful about chiropractic is when we're better able to meet people where they're at, we can then bring them up with us and we meet people in the physical. We're not meeting ethereal beings and ascension beings right off the bat, right? That's not happening. But we can evolve together and become that. But in, in this profession, what we're doing is we're meeting somebody at the very physical level and that physical level of touch. And so when we're able to bring somebody back with us through that journey to become ascension or, you know, whatever, whatever it is that we want to become, um, we need to do that through the care of our bodies. Uh, and, hands down you know we cannot think that it is separate from our mind or anything because even when we think of things out of mind doesn't mean out of body that's the hugest thing because emotional pain everything that's held in within the body is usually emotional and so that's what we're working on is we're working on connecting man to spiritual with man to physical woman mm. so yes. it's it is one and the same. You cannot, you know, focus on one without the other. So we are connected in that. And it is, it is imperative that we remember that our bodies are our temples and our, even though it is just a meat suit on this earth, on this, in this reality, in this one lifetime, it is still our vehicle in which we can do things in which we can become better and serve our community better. Mm, I totally agree with you. Um, a lot of people have, you know, med meditation practices or certain practices or like, oh, let's think positively. But can we kind of bring that same level of kindness and awareness when we are working out? And or are we just dragging that body back and forth, like to the doctors and then to to the gym and in, in a way where it's kind of like this burden, like this burden, I have to eat healthy or okay, I, I will get my amount of sleep. You know, I'm talking about health in a very kind of a basic way, maybe um, from your perspective, but like every day, how are we treating ourselves? Are we just trying to reach this spiritual hoo-ha that's just all the way up here? Or are we really acknowledging, okay, this is all of me and I have to take care of all of me and we're going to get there all of this <laughs> to that next level or um, to, to align back into like my full health and every level. So mm -hmm. exactly. mm -hmm. and that it brings you back into the present because presently right now we are in our bodies. So it allows us to, to come back a little bit and realize like, okay, this is all that I can do today, or this is all that I can do today. Um, and it's important to remember too, that our bodies are, man like they are they are so capable when we give them the opportunity to be and remembering that yeah I mean yeah I would love to eventually be eating just air and living on air but until then what are we doing to help our bodies adapt better that is that is what health is our ability to adapt mm. and if we can increase our ability to adapt then we're not getting the flu we're not getting you know we're and if we do we're healing faster from it that's what I tell everybody I've had hundreds of people lay on the table in the last few weeks with the flu. And I asked them every single time I was like, I have all these people laying on my table. Why am I not sick? What am I doing differently? And that's, that's where you can start meeting somebody where they're at and just ask them the question. Mm. So, and it looks different for everybody, right? Yeah. Caring for their body is different than, you know, I'm caring for your body, my body. So yeah. it's allowing them to open up and realize and start listening to their bodies. What is it that your body's calling for? 
And if you want to have a cupcake, have a cupcake. (laughs) I can't agree more. And listen, listen to what it's saying. Just like your heart is telling you, go this way or change that about your life. Your body is telling you the same thing. It's all the same thing. So Mm -hmm. thanks for bringing that full circle back so that, you know, it's a simple advice, but very powerful, very powerful. So, wow. We've, we've gone through so many topics in this um, interview, but I love it. it it's, it's amazing from your practice, how you've gone um, to create uh, the work that you do today, how that came about to, you know, your, your, your struggle between the head and the heart and finally choosing that heart and letting it guide you to where you are today and being this advocate of hate. The body is here for you, you know, give it what it needs so it can be here for you too. So how can the audience get in contact with you or just deepen their relationship and follow like even more that you have to share? I think the best way right now is our website that we finally redid. It launched back in September, but um, the website is ourbirthinghome.com. And in there, you can find the story of how we became our birthing home and then the nonprofit and also what services we do provide in home and um, down the street from us right now. Um, and then hopefully we'll add on to that vision and create a birth center in this coming 2018. Um, and there's also a contact page on there. So if they want to get in contact, that email shoots directly to me. Awesome. Thank you, Alexi, so much. And everyone, if you miss any of that information or you want to have it all um, in one place, you can head over to the show notes at femininespace.com forward slash Lexi, and that's L-E-X-I. And I really do encourage you to check out her website. Take a look at what's provided like in this world, the choices you have as a woman or whoever you are to maybe suggest to a friend, Oh, have you checked out that option? Or, you know, what type of care can be given to us women at a time that's very vulnerable, that's very special. So this is a great opportunity to open up our eyes to the healing that's available at every stage of our life. And, and um, uh, depending on the country you're in, maybe what Lexis is providing maybe isn't um, given near you, but that's also something you can then ask maybe your local hospital or uh, bring up in women's groups and see if you can create that in your own space. Right. So thank you, Lexi, for coming on and thank you for the work that you do. It truly is sacred. The, the new souls you get to meet and the women who are, Um, birthing these beautiful beings into the world. So thank you for being you and for being here. Thank you, Natasha. I appreciate it. All right. So everybody, thanks for joining us and make sure to get in touch with Lexi. Meanwhile, I'll talk to you again next week. Bye, everybody.